what to screen capture. Well, as you could see from these tutorials, one of the things that you can do with this type of screen capturing technology is to show procedural knowledge about different tasks that are made with the computer. That is, if the computer is your main tool, then it is a perfect way for you to present information to your students and teach them how to obtain different things from the software application. So in essence, we have covered in this tutorial how to do screen capturing with Camtasia and one of the things that you can do screen capturing for is obviously media production as we have been doing so far and this is a pre-made search in YouTube for tutorials regarding the GIMP if you don't know what the GIMP is, is the Graphic Image Manipulator program it's very similar to Photoshop and it is an open source free program that you can download from the web but you can already see that there's a very large number of tutorials about how to use the GIMP. In this another pre-made search I basically asked for Excel and correlation and this will show you that there are many different tutorials that are capturing the screen showing how to run a correlation and how to do it with different types of programs. In this case, Excel is being featured because that is in my search. Another one, it is statistical applications. So basically I did the same type of search in YouTube and instead of typing Excel, I just asked for SAS or you can change the SAS for something like SPSS. And you will find another set of tutorials that have been done by other people using screen capturing technologies. And finally, it doesn't really have to be about the computer. It can be about anything. And I would like to show you this screen capture mostly because it's done by hand. Part of this problem. I am going to move to the part in which things are being drawn. In the apply of bonds. The supply of bonds is really the borrowers. Uh, they, they supply bonds to the market and sell the bond. Essentially, you can also use the computer to show what you're writing and that can be recorded in your screen. So there are many different ways to go about this. Another thing that is very closely related is that you can use it to demonstrate internet resources. These days, there's a lot of things that you can do with the internet and a lot of services have now migrated to the internet and you can offer opportunities to your students that we did not have before. For example, you can give them access to databases, for example, like in the Pew Internet and American Live project where you can have some data sets and you can show essentially to students where they can go and obtain data in order to manipulate it with some transformations. It also can be used in that way. Finally, I would like to say something about procedural knowledge. When you create these lessons, you are also providing one of the possible ways of doing things. Computers allow you to do a lot of things in many different ways. There's no one single way of doing something. So when you teach someone how to do certain things on the computer by, you, by doing these lessons, you are also giving a lesson about how you tackle specific problems with a computer. So if you organize your files first in order to start doing something later, etc., it is quite probable that even though that step it is not absolutely necessary your students are going to probably mimic what you do and the initial way of using a program will be very similar to the way that you have done it but it is important to remember that there's not only one way to do things there are many different ways and when you show with videos how to do something on the computer you're going to be showing also your way of doing things and that is a hidden lesson that it took me some years to recognize that it was there mostly when I saw my students doing things in the exact same way I do them in my own work. Another way of using these screen capturing technologies is to do voiceovers 
over prepared visual material. Let me give you an example. Very quickly I went to Flickr and I looked for a Creative Commons licensed image from the Olympic Stadium from Mexico City. And the main reason I wanted to show you this is because in this stadium is where I learned how to ride a bike when I was very young. And this might be a way for me to show you exactly what it is that I experienced and you can imagine these same type of views for things like archaeology. And Camtasia gives you certain tools that allows you to make use of these type of things. This would be the path that I normally would take on my bicycle on my own when there was very little people using this stadium in Mexico City. And you can do these type of drawings on your material and they will be kept. One of the important things to be aware of if you plan to go this way is that these marks are going to remain in your video and they're not going to be able to be removed once that you render that video. So they're going to stay there. You can also use squares to signal different things. In this case, I am signaling different entry points to the stadium and so on. So you can have visual material and as you speak, you can decide to show different things or call the attention of people to different things in that visual material. By clicking escape, all of that goes away and then you can move more within the screen that you are using very well. And finally, you can use it to give feedback to students. This is an example of the evaluation of a thesis that I did um, a few years back. And basically what I did was to open the Word document where I was reading the thesis. I commented different parts of it. I'm going to let this play. I commented different parts of it and later on I came back, I opened Camtasia and I simply went back through my comments and I explained what I was referring to in the document. So it was a very rich feedback not only because I am commenting very specifically the things that I would like to see in the document but later on I can address them via voice and this will stay there as very meaningful feedback for your students. So those are the type of things that you can screen capture. Nonetheless, later on I'm going to refer you to come over here and let us know how you're using screen capturing and how it's working for you because it is expected that it will work differently for different things and there's no one single use for all disciplines, of course.